Hey, what's going on, guys? Let's talk about street racing. Now, yesterday was definitely not one of my finer moments when I uploaded a video of me street racing to Z. All right. Um, you know, I'll say a couple things about this. You know, I'm, I'm 40 now, and when I was a kid, I would street race any second I could. Any second. If I was on the street, I was racing somebody just because, you know, all my friends did it. We lived in the country. Wasn't a lot of people around and stuff like that. And... You know, even through the years of growing up, I still do it every now and then, you know, I just, you know, we'll get on it and stuff like that. And, you know, I'll tell you like this, you know, street racing is dangerous, it's reckless, it's irresponsible, despite of the video that I uploaded yesterday. So I only really did that because, you know, uh, you know, the Z guy at work, you know, da 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 da. And I just wanted to just kind of, you know, put it out there and he show you on video you know, the race. So it wasn't really to show off or anything like that, you know, because I knew I was going to lose. I just wanted to have a little bit of fun. And if you understood the repercussions of street racing, you, you know, you'll, you'll be a little leery about how often you do it. Because of course, it's story time. And, and I'll try to make this as brief as possible. I dated a girl back when I was 21, 20, 21 years old, so 20 years ago, and her whole family was a family of racing people, um, you know, her dad owned like 15 Mustangs, he had like a little super comp, super comp dragster, I think it was, one of the little mini, mini dragsters, uh, but it, it ran, it would easily run probably seven and a half seconds in the quarter mile, uh, really, really fast. And, you know, he taught his daughter, you know, like, this was one girl that could change her own oil, could change tires, do a tune-up, okay? That type girl. That was the sorority girl I told you about. Of all things, yes, those two things do not go together. But, yes, she was that girl that could do all that. And her parents encouraged us to race all the time. Um, you know, and... One night when we were racing, I had a 93 Z28 Camaro at the time. She was driving a 1988 Mustang Celine. And not just any Celine, a one of a kind Celine. Uh, for that year, they made five Celines in a burgundy and gold combination. So the car is burgundy and the uh, decals are gold. And the same thing with the interior was burgundy and gold. And out of those five that they made for that year, one was the convertible. This is the convertible that she had. You know, her dad had another Celine too, he had an 89 Celine. He's got like a 67 uh, GT350 original, a couple bosses. Anyways, all right. And, you know, we were at dinner one night and we were going to go home to go, you know, uh, whatever just go home early because they were all still having dinner and stuff and we wanted to go out and party with our friends so we're racing home and we get across uh you know the james river bridge and we go to this one spot where we knew what this uh, specifically race spot it was in front of our high school because there was a quarter mile strip right before this like 35 mile, uh, 35 mile per hour embankment, like a really, really sharp turn right there. And everybody knew that you had to slow down at the, at the one sign that says sharp curve or you're not gonna make it. You're gonna run right into the woods. So with me having a Camaro and her having a Mustang, the Camaro was obviously a little bit faster. Uh, a, a little bit faster, I guess you could say, off the line. So the Mustang was a little bit slower off the line because it was so heavy. But the thing had decent power. So we came around that, that uh, the turn to go to the quarter mile thing and instantly we knew, punch it. <laughs> and we punched it and we're, I mean, my car's a little bit ahead like this. And then she starts creeping up a little bit to where I could see the nose of her car. And at that moment, I see the sign. She knows the sign. 
you know? I see the sign, I back off it. And, you know, she's gonna tell you a different story because I guarantee you that girls hate to lose. But she's gonna say that she beat me because my car was slower <laughs> and whatever. No, I backed off because of the turn. She didn't back off. The car came around the corner, skidded like this off the road, hit a tree, flipped, spun around and flipped into the forest. She had a top down, okay? And I mean, you're, you wanna talk about slamming on the brakes. The trunk flew off the car halfway down the freaking street around the turn so nobody would be able to see if they were coming. And if you ever lived on back roads, you know, these people, they don't really go slow on the back roads. You know, they're, they're racing and stuff like we were doing. You know, so I got out, ran over to the to the trunk, pick, picked the trunk up, threw it off the side of the road, ran over to see if my, my girlfriend was okay. The car was flipped down, flipped over in the forest and I could hear that she was okay. And, you know, whether it was a, uh, what you guys want to call an act of God or whatever, who knows? But the car had leaned over upside down onto a tree. And the tree was big. It, it must have been easily a three foot tree. Uh, when you say wrap around a tree, this is what they mean by wrap around a tree. And the Mustangs, the Celines, come especially with what they call a styling light bar, otherwise known as a roll cage a roll bar but they don't call it a roll bar because it's not used to protect in a rollover it's just a styling light bar it's just used for aesthetics and that's it well that styling light bar is what was leaned up against a tree that stopped the tree from crushing the whole interior of the car so therefore uh, my girlfriend was saved and this isn't a girl this isn't my wife now this is from a long time ago and, uh, you know, so she was strapped into the seatbelt, so under the seatbelt, fell to the ground, and, you know, I'm helping her out of the car and stuff, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, despite of the accident being as crappy as it was, she was okay, all right, she came out with literally, literally a scratch over her eye, shit you not, like, you can't ask for anything crazy if you were to see how the car was, but the worst part of all that was having to call her parents, letting her know that there has been a car accident and there is considerable damage to the car we're outside of the car we're trying to tell tell them that we're, we're okay uh, but there's nothing like you know that feeling that you get when you have to call somebody's parents knowing that their daughter has been in a car accident and it's from street racing and they know it's from street racing and that they've encouraged us to street race and, uh, you know, like, when her parents came here, her mom would just, like, start screaming because of what the car looks like, you know, and, you know, you know, the daughter ran up to the car, I'm fine, mom, I'm fine, you know, called an ambulance and everything else, you know, got the sheriff out there. The sheriff's a really cool, this little town that we're in, you know, uh, we just had lost control of the vehicle, and, uh, you know, nobody got ticketed or nothing like that, and, you know, the worst thing about you know, other than having to call the parents, is that when we pulled, when I pulled her out of the car, uh, we landed in a patch of poison ivy. So needless to say, we had poison ivy for the next couple weeks. <laughs> and that probably was the worst of everything, <laughs> believe it or not. But we skated by, we got lucky. I don't care what anybody says, it's, it's luck. And, you know, from that point on, I don't believe she's ever street raced. And it took me many years before I would do it again. Many years. And usually, you know, when I street race, nothing's planned, you know. It's just like, oh, there's a freaking Honda sitting right beside me. He's revving up his little rattle can, his tin can uh, exhaust. And, you know, I, I give him a good, you know, whatever, zero to 60, and, you know, they're gone, and then they don't, they don't fuck with you anymore. But it's, uh, just want to let you know it is dangerous, and I have been a victim of an accident where the other car 
has flown off the road and it's not a pretty picture so I mean I just want to kind of put that out there for for all the you know 18 and 21 year olds and stuff like that you know what I mean that you know that to watch the video probably like oh it's super cool I mean I thought it was a cool video but you know in in the hindsight of things I just want to let you know that street racing you know is dangerous it is reckless it is uh, irresponsible and you know, I, you know, I'm not here to tell people what they what they do and don't do. You know, obviously, you know, I like to have a little bit of fun in my car sometimes. And you know, I don't think that's the worst thing on the world. You know, considering people are Hillary Clinton get away with treason. <laughs> so I just want to just tell everybody, just be careful out there. You know, or whatever you're, whatever that you're doing. Um, you know, there's going to come a time. I'm sure if you're watching the video, you probably have street raced. Uh, maybe if you're a car enthusiast, I'm sure. And uh, you know, maybe you know you know somebody who's had that accident. You see the video. <clears throat> you see the videos all the time. And uh, you know, this is back 20 years ago before any you know YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, you know, we only had some pictures. So I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture of the car, what it looked like after the wreck. I think I have a picture before the wreck. I'm not really quite sure. But um, that way, you know, you could kind of see that, you know, this was really, really no joke. Uh, you know, it's not a laughing matter. And uh, I was just very, very lucky that, that nobody got seriously hurt, uh, if, if not killed. So, because that's, if it wasn't for that styling light bar, light bar she would have been killed. And I would have had to walk around with that guilt for the rest of my life uh, because she didn't slow down. You know, because she had an ego about trying to beat me. And that, that was cool, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, we all, have, we all have egos. So, well, that's my little story time for today, guys. You know, uh, you know, I hope you, you know, maybe learned a little something about it. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of guys, you know, with good comments on, on the racing video. You know, I thank you, but, you know, like I said, it was very irresponsible of me to do. And I don't want you to think that that's what I do all the time, every day, because it's not, you know what I mean? And, and I, I'm full aware that completely reckless and irresponsible, but it is fun. <laughs> All right, guys, till next time, I'm out. See you later.